All right, good evening. I want to take a second and go over my Dust Collector Cyclone upgrade. Um, I purchased a Grizzly Dust Collector with a canister and found that it was getting clogged really frequently. And so I purchased a eBay Cyclone and I built or assembled this myself in my garage. If you want to know how I did it, stick around and I'll show you. So here's a picture of the dust collector that I purchased. I think it was made really well. It's got a ton of power as far as the suction is concerned. My biggest gripe was that the canister was getting filled frequently or clogged frequently. Um, I am glad that I did purchase that uh, canister because now in the Cyclone configuration, I do appreciate that lower micron value. Here's the eBay seller that I used. I believe his name is East Caroga. As of the filming of this video, he's still active and still selling his Cyclone units. I was really happy with the purchase. I think it is very well made, and I would definitely recommend him in particular if you're planning on doing this. So I think it is worth mentioning, you can obviously buy one of these Cyclone dust collectors directly from several manufacturers. I'm a Grizzly guy. I prefer their products. I think you get a good bang for your buck. But there's a lot of other people out there that make them. Um, I think for my dust collector, I paid right around $500 for it. And then the Cyclone off eBay was around $250. With the steel and everything else, I was probably around $1,000. Um, obviously, it made sense to me because I already owned a unit. If you're starting out from scratch, it might just make sense for you to purchase one that's already set up. Unless you're looking for a very specific shop configuration like I was, I wanted to keep it tight against the wall. But buying new might be a better option for some people. So the most important part of this construction, in my opinion, is the base or the vertical structure that holds it. You can see the motor that I have up there, which I showed you the image earlier of the dust collector when I bought it from Grizzly. And what I did is I made a plywood mount for it, screwed it into that, and then these are square tube steel that this whole assembly rides on. And basically it goes down here to the floor You'll see some angle iron where I welded the steel in, and then I put these wood pieces, these two by sixes, in order to raise my garbage can or my canister up off the ground. But the reason why I say that's the most important is because this thing weighs a lot. You have no idea how heavy that motor is until you try to lift it up by yourself. And even if you don't have access to steel and you're planning on mounting your motor assembly to the wall, I would suggest that you put it on like four by four so that you can tilt it up almost like tilt up construction like a concrete wall. That way you're not trying to support the weight while you're screwing it into your wall. Now obviously these other parts are pretty self-explanatory. I ordered a Cyclone that had a six inch inlet. So that was a pretty easy adapter right there. And then it has a left sided duct because I wanted it to be towards my wall. I'll come back to these other pieces in a second, but just moving down, you can see where I made a plywood ring, pretty straightforward, and then I just made some supports to hold it, and those wooden wedges kind of gave it the perfect fit, and I just kind of dropped it in place. Coming down here, I have a, sex, uh, a section of six inch pipe with some hose clamps on it. I think I bought this flange here off Amazon for a couple bucks. It has a sticky adhesive back, and then about a two inch lip. I went to the trouble to try to manufacture clamps, thinking that I would need to really suck this thing down tight. There is no need to do that. This has so much force that it pulls this lid. Absolutely, There's no way you can get this lid off when this thing is on. It draws so much force through here that you don't have to do anything else to basically seal this, at least in my experience. So. Um, this is 240 volt. If I didn't say that earlier, I would highly suggest getting a dust collector that is 240 volt. My experience with these type of motors that are 110, I just don't think you get nearly the same performance if you buy a two horsepower 110 volt. Um, this uh, electronic switch that turns it on is an upgrade for me. I bought the Grizzly orange box that I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen on their website. The controller felt really cheesy and it broke after about a year. I tried to call them and there was no replacement. So this is upgraded to a jet and I like it much better. It seems like it's built a whole lot better than the other one. 
So this is the only real piece that I had to manufacture. And essentially, you're trying to connect. See, when you pull this apart, and I'll show you the other side, you basically just have to make your own fittings. And I made them out of plywood, and I cut six inch holes out of them, and then I just bolted it to the original assembly that the dust collector had and used some uh, caulking in there, and it worked just fine. I use all, for all my dust collector, I use spiral tubing, six inch spiral tubing. And at a, I have a big like wholesaler in Nevada. It's called Western Nevada Supply. It's like a building supply construction. And you can get 10 foot sticks of this stuff for, gosh, I wanna say like 15 or $16. It's really inexpensive. And then over here, the canister basically just has some metal strapping to it that goes up to um, my rafters up in the, the ceiling there. So when I was using this dust collector in its traditional fashion, I was having to empty this canister probably once a day because it was getting so clogged that the performance was horrible of the dust collector. Now twice a year, I pull this filter off and run a dust vac through it and it rarely even needs it. 99% of everything gets caught in that cyclone, which is why I'm such a huge believer of them. Now, one thing that you will see on mine is I have a real sharp 90 coming down here because I want it to keep it next to the wall. In a perfect world, you wanna keep your inlet pipe as straight as possible. So when I redo this one day, I'm gonna actually set the pipe up and I'll show you where I'm gonna go. It's gonna go up and over my garage that way so I have more of a straighter run because the 90s, it, it, it really slows down your airflow so the experts say that test all the numbers and all the things that I don't do. I will show you where this goes. It basically comes down here to a six inch blast gate. Um, I used to have a lathe right here and I wanted to have dust collection there. This smaller tube that you see here, it has nothing to do with my dust collection system. It's actually my dryer vent going out my garage. But what I did is I just used some adapters from that building supply and you see how it takes turns. You wanna do gradual turns if you can and not do hard 90s. And basically it comes out here to my table saw where I have a, a blast gate and then it goes up here to this assembly which feeds a Y and then it also goes to my router that I have built into my Grizzly little extension table. That's a Triton router and this hose here has one of these Rockler dust fittings on it, so it can go to many machines. And if I need to, I can plug it up here in my ceiling. Sorry about the lights. And now it's going up and over to my jointer over there. I was getting tired of having the hose on the ground, so I ran this little thing temporary. That was about two years ago. It's working good and I really don't want to spend the time to run hard pipe right now, so I don't. The only other machine that has its own dedicated line is a Grizzly 20 inch, uh, whoops, 20 inch planer, the helical planer, which I really love, and um, that just wants to stay there. Um, when you're choosing blast gates, spend the extra money to buy these metal blast gates off the bat. They are way better at getting a foolproof seal than the plastic ones. The plastic ones get things jammed down in those grooves and then they won't seal all the way and you'll be fighting them for as long as you have them. So now I just buy metal whenever they blow out. Like this one here has a clamp on it and needs to be replaced. Anyway, um, the performance is absolutely worth doing one of these upgrades. I know Grizzly and other companies now make dust collectors that are similar to this. The cool thing is the footprint, no one else makes a dust collector that has this narrow of a footprint. It only stands out, I'll try to bring the camera over, about 24 inches from the side of my wall there. So for the bang for the buck and the size, I think it's better to build it yourself. As I said in the, um, when I described this, it, it has 1600 CFM, I think. I could turn it on and show you how powerful it is. I don't know if that would prove anything because I don't have one of those wind meters to show you how much air it's pulling, but it is a ton for my shop and what I do. My shop's about 22 feet 
by about 20 feet and so it's a standard two car garage and the primary thing that I do is live edge slabs and farmhouse tables, things like that. A lot of these tools I've moved out of the way to kind of show you, but basically I have my outfeed table here and my air compressor, which is usually right next to it, which keeps it really compact and tight. So if you're thinking about doing this, that eBay seller that I have mentioned earlier, highly recommend him, sells a great product. I think it's a fair price and you can save about 700 bucks by doing it yourself and then you get to make it exactly the way you want. There's some pictures on eBay that he shows of other people's ideas and I think it's definitely worth the upgrade so you don't have to pull this canister off and change it out every day. Hope this was helpful to you and have a good night. Thank you.